Go with me to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, gives us some amazing, amazing insight into anxiety and how to deal with it. Okay, uh, Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 10. Say amen if you have it. If you don't, it's up on the screen. So then, everybody say so then. He said, banish anxiety from your heart and cast off the troubles of your body for youth and vigor are meaningless. We'll get into that in just a moment. God, thank you for what is in your word and what it is intended to do in our lives. And we receive it now by your spirit for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. All righty, all righty. Everybody say anxiety. We've been dealing with it here all this month and understanding what it is and uh, how, how it affects us and how it's connected to stress. It's connected to fear. It's connected to uncertainty. It's connected to situations over which we have no control. And those are the reasons why we get anxious, because we have no control. We don't know what to do. We, we run out of solutions. And so Solomon then has a word of advice and exhortation and encouragement for us. He says, so then banish anxiety from your heart. Everybody say banish. banish. The word banish means to do away with. So do away with anxiety. And the word anxiety here in the Hebrew means uh, this. It means frustration. Do away with frustration. Banish it. Do away with the things that frustrate you in life. Anybody get frustrated? Am I the only one in this? Okay, thank you. All right. Banish anxiety. So this is another form of anxiety. I told you that there's four different dimensions of anxiety that we're looking at. So this is another word in Hebrew dealing with anxiety. In English, we're just anxiety. But in Hebrew, they have completely different words, completely different meanings. So this deals with the idea of being frustrated in your life. So then banish anxiety from your heart or your mind. And cast off. Everybody say cast off. cast off. One word in the Hebrew. It means to expel. It's like to repel. To repel is to block off. Expel means to totally move out of the way. Expel it. Like anybody, anybody ever get expelled from school? Never mind. No testimonies. And cast off or expel the troubles of your body. Watch. Troubles is that which would cause you bodily harm. Get rid of that stuff, he's saying. So let's, let's go into this. And then he says, why? For youth and vigor are meaningless. He doesn't mean that it, it's, it's pointless to be young. He just means this. You ain't going to be young forever. So don't count on that, young people. You ain't going to be young forever. Believe me, I thought I was at one time too. I'm not anymore. And so it is that you have to then learn in the process how to deal with life. And so he says, you know, uh, I, I, I was young too, and, and I thought I knew it all, and, 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 and I found out that I still need some help, and I still need to exercise wisdom, and I still need to employ some te techniques in dealing with life struggle and life situation. So we understand that Solomon, when he says, so then banish anxiety from your heart, it's clear to us that he experienced anxiety. Every human being on the face of the earth, I don't care who you are, will deal with anxiety in some form, capacity, or another. Amen. Short time, long time, short season, long season, doesn't matter. We'll all deal with it in some way. Comes in different forms. And so he says, banish anxiety. So we understand that he experienced anxiety, but he gives us an answer to an unspoken but implied question. It doesn't ask a question, but it's, but it's clear that there's a question here. So then banish anxiety from your heart, because if he tells us to do it, then there's clear that there's a question, and it's this. What do we do with anxiety? What can we do? What is it that we can do in a situation when we're dealing with anxiety? He's telling you anxiety is coming going to happen and so he says here's what to do when it comes banish it and cast it off banish anxiety and cast off troubles of your body so this passage then that we deal with deal with is the third of the four 
that we are looking at that gives us one of life's solutions uh, to the problem of dealing with anxiety. First of all, understand this. God wants us to live and to enjoy life to its fullest. Would you please say amen? amen. God, say that with me. God wants me to enjoy my life and live it to its fullest. The problem is, is that anxiety can rob us of that privilege. Because anxiety will sap you. It'll take all the enjoyment out of life. It just, it's like a thief. Anxiety paralyzes. Anxiety is a thief. It's a robber. It's a destroyer. And so he says, I'm, I'm giving you some help here, and I'm giving you some solutions here to deal with this thing. So there are two phases then in this verse in utilizing the antidote to anxiety. Everybody say two. two. The first one is what? He gives us the instruction. Banish it. Everybody say banish one more time. Banish. Do away with it. Just do away with it. Now. The question then becomes, can we banish anxiety from our hearts? He's telling us to do it, but can we? Well, he wouldn't have told us if there wasn't a solution. Amen. 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 So the issue then becomes this. Banishing is not the denial of reality. A lot of people, you know, I have no problems. Everything is fine. Everything is wonderful. I'm just going to stay here and just stay in a constant state of, I am okay. No, you ain't. Because once you stop that, you're going to be hit with anxiety. The thing that frustrates you, the thing that's got you crazy, is going to still be there when you're through. So the reality is this, is that, you know, banishing anxiety is not denying anxiety. Like back in the day, the Word of Faith movement used to tell everybody, don't say you're sick. You know, you got 104 fever, your nose is running like Niagara Falls, and I am not sick, I don't have a cold. Well, that's stupid. It's stupid. And it's presumption. No, you're sick, you're sick. But God's a healer. Amen. If I could just will myself not to be sick, what do I need God for? Right. Hello, somebody. So the issue is, the issue is, it's banishing anxiety is not denying anxiety. It's going to come. It's going to hit you. Now, I'm not being a prophet of doom. I'm just going to tell you that's life. Stuff is going to happen. Something's going to come and unsettle you. Trust me, I went through it last week. When that doctor told me what he told me, that report, I said... I had Pastor Santino with me. Pastor Santino looked at me. I looked at him. I said, mm. But you know what? I tried to do some of this stuff that we're talking about. Right there in that doctor's office. Amen. That's where the rubber meets the road. You got to do this. Look at somebody tell them, do this. So it is then it, that banishing is not uh, the denial of anxiety or the denial of reality. But banishing anxiety is a process, watch this, that enables us to individually and collectively deal with each anxious, anxious thought that can negatively impact us and paralyze us in the moment. Let me break that down. Banishing anxiety is when I get hold of every single thought. That's making me anxious. And I go, okay, that's bad news. And that's bad news. And, and that's bad news. And I got a series of events that are happening. And they're all seemingly kind of coming together at the same time. And that's where you really get overwhelmed. And so Solomon is saying, no, 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 no. Take each one by themselves. One by one. And give each one of those things to God. Amen. Take each one and say, God, I put this thing in your hands. Amen. 
I put that situation, I put that person, I put that, 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 that chaotic thing that just happened, I put that in your hands. And then you start to do that one by one by, well, it's like, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One by one by one by one by one. And then you collectively gather them all together and you say, okay, now you know what? Now I put the whole thing in your hand. When we do that, we can then deal with those things and those thoughts that impact us negatively and want to keep us paralyzed in that moment. Because anxiety will cause paralysis. So we understand that there's a process here then in banishing anxiety. Anxiety can enable, uh, disable us and it will disable us from seeing our life, watch this, from a long-range view. Anxiety will keep you paralyzed and frozen in the moment. I can't see beyond right now. I can't see beyond tonight. Will I see tomorrow? Where's my future? What am I going to be doing? Will I, will I live Will I see children and grandchildren? And w- w- Will I see the fullness of the promise of God come to pass in my life? Will I- but you see, anxiety says, you're stuck, man. You're stuck. You're not moving from here. You may as well just as well, as well resign yourself to your own mortality. Anxiety will paralyze you, freeze you, stuck. You're disabled. You're not able to function. And anxiety is a trick of the enemy. And it's a tool of the enemy. And so he wants to keep you, and anxiety itself will keep you right there it'll disable you from seeing your life from a long range view so what do we do solomon says banish anxiety cast that stuff off so we banish anxiety when we see our life from what from a divine perspective when i get up to where i'm seated with christ in heavenly places then i say okay you know what Now I'm not stuck in the moment. Now I'm above the moment. I'm above the situation. I'm above the condition. And I'm seeing things the way God sees them. God says, no, no, no. I know the end from the beginning. And I know everything in between. And I got this thing worked out already. This is already handled. Don't you worry about a thing. I've got you. I already assigned you your destiny. I already have an appointed end for you. And it's not right now. And so you learn how to see then from a divine perspective, from a God view. When you start banishing anxiety. Because what you're doing, you say, I'm giving this stuff to you. I'm giving this stuff to you. It's in your hands. You're going to handle this. You're going to deal with I don't have to deal with this. And then God says, that's right. Come on, just give it to me and come sit with me. Come on up a little bit higher and sit with me so you can see what's really going on down there. Second, Solomon says what? He says, cast off or expel the troubles of your body. So we understand, first of all, with regard to anxiety, that it can affect us mentally and psychologically and emotionally. And then we realize that it can affect us physically. You can become physically sick from anxiety. You can get headaches from anxiety. You can get upset stomach from anxiety. People have heart attacks from anxiety. So he says, no, you've got to cast that stuff off. So first, say first banish. Second, cast off. So secondly, we cast off or expel troubles. How? By not holding on to that mental attitude which we're prone to assume. Because the first thing we do with frustration and the first thing we do with bad news and the first thing we do with things that trouble us and bother us, we get negative. 
Oh, this ain't going well. This ain't going to turn out good. Oh, no, this, no, you know what? This ain't good. You know, oh, well, you know what? You may as just resign yourself to the fact this ain't going to turn out. This is all going to go bad. And so you have to, watch, you have to expel that. Breathe in the good air and expel the bad air. Breathe it out. Breathe it out in prayer. Breathe it out in praise. Breathe it out in worship. Give God your highest praise in the midst of your anxiety. Cast that stuff off. Expel it out of you. Expel it from your mind. Expel it from your spirit. Expel Expel it from your perspective. Expel it from your attitude. Expel it from that which would make you think negatively right away. We're so prone to go there. Isn't it interesting, though, that we always think negative instead of positive? The first word you ever learned as a baby, if you said mama or daddy, that may have been the first. But the next one was no. It wasn't yes. It was no. And we're no people. Why? Because we have a sin nature in us that contorts us and distorts us to see everything from a no instead of a yes. And God says, no, no, no. I want you to start saying things from a yes place. Speaking a yes word. And that I'm a good God. And I know how to take care of my children. So we cast this stuff off then, and instead of holding on to that mental attitude that we're so quick to assume and quick to embrace, don't go there. Instead, what? Choose to give that to God. God, I'm giving you this thing right now. I'm going to expel this thing out of me. How am I going to get it out of me? How am I going to get this out of my psyche? How am I going to get this out of my mind? How am I going to get this out of my spirit? How am I going to get this out of, out of this thing right here? I'm going to get this out of here. I got to expel this. I'm giving it to you. And I'm going to believe you instead. I'm going to trust you instead. See, you can choose to be a dreary pessimist. You can choose that. Yeah. Worry is a choice. Pessimism is a choice. You can wake up in the morning and say, this is going to be a terrible day. Or you can wake up and say, you know what? It's going to be a great day in God. Amen. Stuff may happen over there that ain't great, but if I'm in God, it's good. I'm going to trust God. You know, heard some people lately, you know, some people don't know whether the glass is half full or half empty. Well, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. I'm just glad I got a glass. Amen, somebody. Sometimes you just have to thank God for the glass. You can be a dreary pessimist or you can encourage yourself to remember that your life belongs to God. And that's the most important thing in casting off trouble. My life belongs to God. I'm in His hands. I'm not in the hands of the enemy. I'm not in the hands of... Don't you ever let anybody tell you you're in the hands of the enemy. Because you're not. You're in the hands of God. And you can cast that off. That's a lie from the devil. Amen. You, just, you just lift your hand in the morning and you say, I'm in your hands this morning. Amen. I'm in your hands today. Amen. I'll be in your hands at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I'll be in your hands at 7 tonight. I'll be in your hands at 11 o'clock. I'll be in your hands if I wake up at 3 a.m. I'm still in your hands. And as long as I'm in your hands, no one can take me out. And you got a good plan for what's in your hands. You know what to do with what's in your hands. You know how to protect what's in your hands. You know how to care for what's in your hands. If you're in the hands of God, it means you're precious to Him. It means you're valuable. You don't leave stuff 
just for anybody to come and get if it's valuable. Well, you keep it with you. Yes, What's one of the most, where my keys at? Where my car keys at? You go searching in your pockets or in your purse. Why? Because that's an important thing in your life. Well, you know what? God is always saying, I got you right here. I got you right here. I got you. I got you. I got you. I I didn't leave you anywhere. I didn't forget you. I didn't toss you aside. I didn't leave you to come back for you. I got you. God has a purpose for your life. And so Solomon is teaching us then to maximize enjoyment and minimize anxiety. Go get the good out of life. Go find the good in life. Oh yeah, we went to Vegas. I had a good old time in Vegas. Eat good, my God. Got some of the best restaurants in the world in Vegas. All these signature restaurants, Bobby Flay and all these people, they got restaurants. Man, you eat like a king over there. I had a good time. Enjoyed myself. I decided after everything I'd been through, you don't even know. I decided to go maximize my enjoyment. And I did it in Jesus' name. And I decided to minimize my anxiety. Let me just tell you this. We are accountable, listen to me and listen to me good now. We are accountable for the stewardship of our minds. You and you and I are accountable for the stewardship, for the watch care, for the guarding, for the preservation of our minds. God gives you a mind. He doesn't want you to fill it with anxiety. He doesn't want it filled with nonsense. He doesn't want it filled with negativity. He doesn't want it filled with pessimism. He doesn't want it filled filled with anything that is going to violate his good and divine and perfect will in your life. So you're a steward over your own mind. You're the gatekeeper of your own mind. That means you can keep stuff out And let stuff in. You have the key. It's one of the keys of the kingdom. So you don't have to let that thing get in there. And if by some reason it slips in, you can kick it out in Jesus' name. Get out of my mind. I expel this thing out of here. The stuff I can't deal with, I'm giving it to God. You're the steward of your own mind. You see, because the activity of anxiety takes place in the mind. It affects everything else. But it takes place in the mind. And the psychological noise of anxiety, it creates noise, chaos. Clatter, rumblings. The psychological noise created by anxiety drowns out the rational thinking that a believer can employ and enjoy. It just drowns it out. You ever try to hear a good conversation with somebody and the noise is so loud or music is so loud or somebody's talking next to We were sitting at a table at a restaurant when, when I was gone and, and there was a guy next to me. His voice was so loud he didn't need no microphone. And I was just like, I was like, you know, you, you know how you get that? Like, you know, I was like, guy drowning, drowning out my conversation. Well, psychological noise can do that. It'll drown out the good word. It'll drown out the positive thing. It'll drown out rational thinking that allows you to say, you know what? I'm the child of, I'm a child of God and God's got me and God's got this. And I'm not going to let no psychological noise mess up what I hear in my head. I'm not going to let that stuff mess with what God is saying to me right now. I'm going to listen to the voice of God. I'm going to read the word of God. 
mental health is not something that can be left to chance. You can't just say, well, whatever happens, I just, uh uh-uh. No, it is not a matter of leaving that to chance. It is not a matter of just saying whatever or I'll see or, well, you know, whatever. No, 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 no. Listen to me. Mental health, emotional health, psychological health is a divine imperative. God wants you well. God wants you mentally. God don't want no messed up crazy folk. No, here's my crazy child. No. No. We're all crazy a little bit, but no, God wants us healthy here. Sound mind. Ah, God. He's not giving you the spirit of fear. Chaos, disturbance, noise. Sound mind. God wants you to have a, would you lift your hand with me and just say, God wants me to have a sound mind. God doesn't want me crazy. He wants me out of a sound mind. I don't believe that the child of God is supposed to have... No, oh, never mind. No, I'm, not, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. You can live free. You can live free from anxiety. By using and employing what is given us right here in the Council of Solomon. Stand your feet. God, thank you. You are our God. We thank you because there is a solution and there is a remedy and there is a cure and there is an antidote for everything in our lives because you created us and you know how to take care of us. And so we trust you tonight. And we give all of our stuff to you. Put it in your lap. One, two, three, that thing, that thing, that thing, that thing. And yeah, that's that thing right there. And we take it all individually, collectively, and put it in your care. Because we belong to you. And we thank you for it tonight. Now bless your people. We're your people. We're your people. And you are our God. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a praise.